Welcome to the Net Bible Church YouTube channel. If you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of our new uploads. If you'd like more information about the Net Bible Church or how you could donate, please click on the link below. Thank you so much for watching. By your blood, we have been sanctified. Oh yes, that we've been cleansed from all unrighteousness and that we are called the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh yes, and you said the righteous shall live by faith. The righteous shall live by totally trusting you. That we shall live by only believing and not fearing. That we should live by faith. Hallelujah. That we should live by believing that your word is true. That every word that has been written and spoken is true and that we can count on you we can rely on you and you alone in this life hallelujah and everybody said amen 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 hallelujah where would we be if we did not have a standard in which to live by where would we be if we didn't have the truth of god's word whereby we can know that we have a solid foundation amen a foundation that cannot be shaken, and that is God's word and his promise. Hallelujah. Our hope always rests in him. Amen. That the people of God would take the things of God so serious. Amen. Get serious about the things of God. Amen. Hallelujah. It's funny, if you look through the Old Testament, eh, there always was a time that the people kind of slowly got away from the things of God. God would move mightily and draw the people, but then they'd slowly get away, and God would say, turn to me, turn to me, turn your hearts towards me, repent, and, um, and God would move mightily again. And it's been like that from the beginning of time. Amen. If God's people will humble themselves and pray and call on the name of God, he will absolutely, absolutely move. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you may go ahead and be seated. <clears throat> we have a great expect expectancy tonight of what God <clears throat> wants to do for his people. Amen. Amen. We've got to, as the people of God, we've got to keep ourselves stirred up, stirred up with expectancy. Um, why? Because faith expects. <laughs> if we're not expecting, that means, it just means we're not in faith. And um, I don't know what we are in, but we're not in faith because faith is always expecting. Say faith always expects and so we have to live a life of expecting God to do something expecting God to move amen and so um, sometimes we're there's sometimes we have to sacrifice some things amen and um, the flesh doesn't like to sacrifice but we have to sacrifice if we want to go up to a higher place in God if you want to go if you want to go high higher in God you're going to have to go deeper <laughs> The higher things of God, the higher things of God are deeper. Amen. And um, in order to do that, we can't bring the things of this world into that place with us. All we can do is bring our hearts, our lips. Amen. So anyway, hallelujah. Well, um, let's look at Matthew in chapter 9. Amen. Good place to start. Matthew chapter 9 and starting at verse 35. Now, I'm going to be reading this out of the NIV, and it's different in different translations, but um, it's, it's the same message, amen? If we could realize that, it's the, the Bible is the good news. The gospel, the gospel word gospel means good news. And the Bible is, it just means a book, but it doesn't just say Bible, it says the Holy Bible. It's a holy book. And God has given us his Holy Spirit, Amen. And um, the gospel is good news, that we don't have to live in sin. And um, in Matthew 9, chapter, chapter 9, starting at verse 35 out of the NIV, it says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. This was the ministry of Jesus. He went around teaching. He taught and taught and taught and taught. He taught, and he taught, and he taught, and he taught. Amen? He was a teacher. Why? Because 
He was the shepherd of the sheep. Shepherds teach. That's just what they do. And so he went around doing all these awesome things. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless. The people were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest. He's the Lord of the harvest. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Amen. So where is God going to get these workers to go out in the harvest? He's going to get, he's going to get these people. <laughs> Amen. They're part of a local church. They're committed to the things of God. They're growing in the knowledge of the things of God and, um, and able to actually share the word, instruct people in the word so that they can begin their own walk with God, accept Jesus Christ as their Lord, perhaps get filled with the Holy Spirit and get involved in, and connected in a local church. Local churches is not, a local church is not man's idea. Now, man could have corrupted it, and man could have done a lot of things with it, but the local church is absolutely God and God alone's idea. It's God's idea. Remember, he is the or orig original. <laughs> he, he is the one that had the idea originally for local, a local church, local congregations and people. Even back then, they had... It said when Jesus went around, he went preaching in the synagogues. There wasn't one, but there were many synagogues in local areas where people would go to hear, to hear the word of God. So Jesus was preaching and teaching in these things. And then, and then so he was asking for, um, if, if, you know, that they're so looking at the vast amount of people and just even now. How many people do you know that are not born again and have not gotten saved? Or there's some that are uh, curious about the things of God. Some are hungrier for the things of God. But he said when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. He had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless. And in the New Living Translation, it said he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Hallelujah. In the message, it said, when he looked out over the crowds, his heart broke. So confused and aimless they are, like sheep with no shepherd. Amen. And so in understanding that, that God understands, <laughs> the Lord knows and understands that people in th that age, as in this age, that people are, are harassed, amen? They feel harassed, they feel helpless, confused, amen? Aimlessly run walking around, no idea, no purpose, why are we here? And where is this God that people talk about? They're so, and, and, and what he said was they are, these people collectively, all of these people collectively, harassed, confused, all of them. <clears throat> he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. How important, how important it is to have a shepherd. In Jeremiah 3.15, it says, Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you, who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. If we understand, that's why you bring tithes and offerings, tithes and offerings, so that there will be meat to eat. There will be, you know, the, you know, you don't want to muzzle the ox while they're doing the plowing. <laughs> Amen. You want to make sure that there's meat to eat in the, in the storehouse. Amen. And so <clears throat> understanding where Jesus, you know, where he's coming from in these scriptures, he just saw the crowds of people and, and he was moved with compassion 
It broke his heart that all of these people were going, were being harassed and going through so many things <clears throat> because they didn't have anybody to shepherd them and show them the way and teach them. And so the harassment that they were under was basically a satanic influence. If we can understand a, a, a satanic influence, basically satanic is just all of a relating to the characteristics of Satan or Satan himself or, or the enemies of God. It's relating to that. And influence is enough. The in, what the word influence, satanic influence is of Satan, satanic. It's an influence. It's, it's basically the word influence is having an effect. So the, the influence of Satan was having an effect on the people. It had effect on them and it, exerting influence on them, it, determining. It, it was guiding these people and controlling these people. This is all influence. It was shaping them and, and informing them and governing. You know, govern means to lead. It was governing and, sh and leading and prompting them in certain directions. It would govern them. And it, it regulated their lives and their thinking and the, all the sickness and disease and hopelessness because they were harassed. They were harassed by satanic influence. And so Jesus said it's because they are like sheep without a shepherd. And we know that Jesus said that he was going to give them sheep he was going to give them a shepherd, the sheep give them a shepherd that would lead them with knowledge and understanding so that they will know and have an understanding of what this harassment is and where it's coming from. I don't even remember, you know, in my short little 70 years, in my young 70 years, I, I can't even remember a time where there was so much harassment on humanity, satanically influenced harassment. And so we can look at people, we can judge what we see in their behavior without knowing if we're not in the spirit and seeing in the spirit that it's more than likely satanic influence that is harassing the person. You and I, can come under harassment at any given time and not know what that harassment is. So in, in understanding that, that even though there might be times where you feel like you're harassed or you're without hope, that we're, we have to hang on to our hope in God. We have to hang on to our hope in God in his power and his ability to deliver us from every single type of harassment. Because harassment comes in many different forms and fashion. It harassment, harassment is a mental, it's a mental attitude. It's, it's a mental oppression that comes from so many different directions and different sources and, and, and different levels to where, you know, you could just maybe feel bad or be full on depressed. And so harassment comes from many directions, but it's always it's always sent to, as it says in John 10.10, 10. It it's always a satanic influence that comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. That's what harassment is. And, and it, it can come from family and friends and from our own thoughts. We could just not even be around anybody and feel harassed. Or without think, saying the word harassed, you could feel oppressed or depressed or feel sad or you're hopeless, you can begin to feel these things. Because Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So what he does is he harasses us. And as he's harassing us, he's stealing life, and he's stealing our joy, and he's stealing. He's trying to steal all these elements out of our lives. Amen? And so how does he harass? He can harass us physically, you know, with symptoms or thoughts of symptoms. <laughs> He can, he can harass us physically and f be harassed financially. He can be totally harassed financially. 
And if the devil can get you financially, he'll just keep coming at you and coming at you and try to get you oppressed and depressed and defeated financially, not knowing that God is the God of provision. And what kind of provision? The word of God says he does more than enough. And it's according to his riches and glory, not our ability. Right? Not according to our, what is that? I was going to say Y2K. Not according to our, our what is it? <laughs> 401K. See, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And so he can harass us mentally, physically, financially, emotionally. You could just be minding your own business and out of nowhere, you'll just start not feeling a little sad or something. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're full on depressed. And all of a sudden, these negative thoughts coming about things that happened in the past or just happened last week or why is this? And, you know, the devil will just bombard you, harass you, totally harass you. Because that's what he does. That's what Jesus said. They were harassed. <clears throat> Amen? I mean, her, her, you have understanding where the, the word harassment even comes from, you know? And everybody said amen. <laughs> I'm going to, whoop, I'm going to look this one up for you just because I can. The word harassed means it covers a, a wide range of behaviors, but the word harassment <clears throat> is the adjective is considered stressed or feeling or looking strained through having too many demands made on you. The demands of life. Amen? Just, just having demands put on you mentally. You could be at work and feel like under all this pressure, you can feel under all this pressure because this has to get done and these people are doing that and I need to take care of this and it has to be done by this time. And all of these pressures, that harassment that it comes, it, it only comes from us. It's a mental thing. The harassment is something mental. And, and it's, it's being stressed, harassed, not enough. How is this going to happen? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Amen. And so in understanding how Jesus had compassion, he had compassion and mercy towards the people because they were being harassed from every direction, from the enemy, because he knew the enemy was coming to only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus was coming to bring new life. Amen? And so because we have new life, we have something to fight after <laughs> the harassment with in the name of Jesus. And Jesus said he was going to send, he was sending shepherds after his own heart. Now that doesn't mean everybody that's called pastor. <laughs> Some churches have 10 of them. I don't know. They call everybody. They just give them the name pastor, <laughs> some kind of title. And so, and then people are going to everybody for counsel, <clears throat> not knowing just because they have a, a title in front of their name, if they're even uh, equipped or in the place to do it. And, um, I've known people that had titles of pastor that I would no more ask any, any spiritual advice <laughs> or even what scripture than anything because their lives were so in such an upheaval, not living for God at all, but yet they had titles. So we have to understand that not everybody that is called a pastor is a pastor because a true pastor is somebody that, as Jesus said, I'm going to send you pastors after my own heart that are there to, not to teach you because they're going to have a title, or to, but somebody that really has a heart for the people and the, shop, the sheep. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And so in Hebrews 4, 14, and this is out of the message, it says, now that we know what we have, have Jesus, this great high priest, with ready access to God, let's not, let's not let... It slipped through our fingers. We don't have a priest who is out of touch with reality. He's been through weakness and testing, experienced it all, all but sin. 
So let's walk right up to him and get what he is so ready to give and take mercy and accept help. In the King James Version, it says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. The devil came to harass him. He harassed him. He, the, the word of God says that he is touched with our infirmity. He's familiar with the harassment. He knows what it's like. He knows what it feels like. He knows where it's coming from. Amen. He has been touched with our feelings and our infirmities and knows when we are harassed, he knows how it feels, but he said he had compassion. Amen. He has an understanding of what, what life is and what's going on. And he knows when his children feel harassed and dumped on. You ever feel dumped on in life? <laughs> I could say today, <laughs> I was like, we're talking about it earlier. Guy's like, I was like, guy, I, I, can't, I can't get it together. I just can't get it together. I don't know what's going on. He goes, I know how you feel. He says, maybe we should just text everybody and cancel church. And right when he said that, I thought, that's not a good idea. <laughs> that ain't, I don't think that's God. <laughs> <laughs> Though I was tempted, <laughs> but I did not sin in my temptation. I canceled church for the heck of it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because this is God's idea. Amen. This is God's idea. And though the enemy would try to affect us financially, physically, mentally, emotionally, God has sent deliverance in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We just need to pray. We just need to pray. Let God do what only God can do because God said in his word, pray, 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 pray. That means talk to him, let him move, let him do what he wants to do, let him say what he wants to say. Involve God in our lives personally, not just, it's not just for Sunday and morning and Wednesday night or whenever people have church. God wants to be a part of our lives every day. When things are difficult, when things are, when things are good, sometimes people have a tendency to just never have God involved in the good times. God wants to be involved in all the times. Amen. And the biggest temptation is to not have God be involved in the good times. Why? Because God's word says so. When you have been blessed, don't forget. Don't forget where the blessing comes from. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so what we need to do is we need to pray because Jesus, of course, we, we started out reading what, what Jesus did. He went around to the villages teaching, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of Kingdom, that's what we've done here tonight. This is good news, isn't it? Good news. And he went around proclaiming good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. And let me just say there's sickness and disease that could be physically, but we could have the sickness of the mind, having oppression. A lot, the world doesn't want to even, you know, put this in the same basket, but the world is suffering now from mental illness more than any other time in all of history. And it's not going to get better for the general public. We must come to God, and God will deliver us from the harassment of the mind and our hearts and souls that has been by his enemy and ours. Amen. Hallelujah. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand up, and we're going to pray. We need to pray, and we, we need to. It's really hard to, to be used by God to have somebody be set free if we're not free. We must, we must be free. Amen? The devil is the harasser, and he is very full-time on the job, full-time. I'm not talking about, you know, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. I'm not talking... The devil is full-time, that means 24-7, 
full time looking for somebody to harass, looking for the children of God who he could harass and discourage and be despondent and sick and mentally losing all hope. Amen. But that's God sent Jesus that we can be free from all of this. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.